No one is applying 60 Ps and rubbing their hands together and patting it in. I don't think I'm even exaggerating when I say clean beauty is literally killing people. Here is a little known fact about mineral sunscreens. A lot of them actually contain unregulated chemical sunscreens, which isn't always a big problem, but it also kind of is. I'm Michelle, chemistry PhD, cosmetic chemist, and massive sunscreen nerd, and today we're talking about inactive ingredients in sunscreens that aren't really inactive. It's not that easy to make a sunscreen. It might seem like all that's important in a sunscreen are the active ingredients. After all, they're listed separately on a label in the US and Australia, and the percentages are right there. But if you just mix these ingredients into a base, you probably won't get SPF 50. That's because how these are distributed in the rest of the sunscreen is really important to how well the sunscreen blocks UV. That's why sunscreen is one of the most difficult products to formulate. Lots of things like the other ingredients and how they're mixed together can make a really big difference. It's one of the reasons why it can be hard to predict the SPF of the sunscreen just from the active ingredient percentages, which I've talked about before in my video on SPF testing. One cosmetic chemist told me it took her six months to update an existing SPF 30 sunscreen to make it up to SPF 50. As well as changing the levels of the active ingredients, she also had to change a whole bunch of the inactive ingredients as well. And that's just to update a sunscreen, making a sunscreen from scratch would take even longer. So there are a bunch of inactive ingredients out there that can help the actives in the sunscreen work better to get you a higher SPF. These are commonly called SPF boosters. A lot of these really are just helping out the proper sunscreen actives. Some are film formers and solvents that help keep the sunscreen actives spread out in an even film on your skin. It's a bit like a smooth paint versus one that isn't mixed up well. If the coverage isn't even, you end up with gaps in the paint layer. So analogy time, it's like a football team spreading out in front of the goalie. Some boosters change the way the UV travels in the sunscreen film. For example, there are particles that bounce the UV around for longer in the sunscreen film, so it has more of a chance to get absorbed. So I guess this is like your football players getting better at deflecting the ball. But some of them actually function just like chemical sunscreens. They absorb UV light and convert it to other forms of energy like heat exactly like a chemical sunscreen. So this is just like dumping a whole bunch of extra players onto your field, which is illegal in football, I think. Take butyl octosalicylate. It's usually branded as a solvent or an emollient moisturizer, and it does do these things, but it does a lot more than that. Here is its structure, and here is the structure of octosalate. The official name for octosalate is ethyl hexosalicylate, which as you can tell from the name, is butyl octosalicylate's relative. But is it a twin brother or a distant cousin three times removed? Well, the first part of the name tells you how many carbon atoms are attached to this right part of the structure. There are four more carbons in butyl octosalicylate. If you know a bit of chemistry or if you've watched my video on how sunscreens work, you'll know that the section that absorbs UV is not the bit that's different. It's this salicylate part on the left-hand side with the ring that absorbs the UV light, and it's identical in both molecules. The bit that's different doesn't actually interact with UV at all. This is what their absorbance spectra look like. They both protect against UV around the same. So butyl octosalicylate is really just octosalate's identical twin brother with slightly longer hair. Functionally and in every other relevant way, really, they are the same thing. They both protect against UV around the same, and octosalate can also act as a solvent and moisturizing emollient. So why isn't butyl octosalicylate classified as a proper sunscreen active ingredient and put in that top box with the percentage shown? Well, it seems like the manufacturer just decided not to go through the proper legal process. Sunscreen actives in most regions are regulated in a special way. This includes in the EU, where sunscreens are technically cosmetics, but approved sunscreen actives are included in a special list in the regulations. Getting a chemical sunscreen ingredient or any sunscreen active registered means you have to go through a special process. This involves submitting a whole bunch of safety data for regulators to assess, and based on that, they decide if it's going to be approved, if there are any special conditions of use, so for example, if it could be used in sprays or lip balms, if it needs a warning label, if there's special grades allowed, and what the maximum percentage allowed should be. Getting the safety data, as well as the whole process of registration, can be very expensive, and it takes many years. 
If you look at the reports for MCE or Mexoral 400, which was officially approved in the EU in 2020, some of their safety data that they submitted is almost 10 years old. Now, maybe you might be thinking, all this admin seems kind of unnecessary, why is there all this red tape? Well, these processes are in place for a reason, to ensure that everyone stays safe. If you buy a random sunscreen from a store and use it, you want to be reasonably confident that you won't massively poison yourself or get sunburned using it. Before drug regulation became a thing in the early 1900s, people would get really sick or even die from taking medications. You'd have medicines with opium and alcohol in them, even baby medicines, which I guess at least would make people feel better for a bit. This is the whole reason that pretty much every country has some sort of drug regulation. And within the regulations of the regions that I looked at, if you're using an ingredient in a sunscreen to absorb UV and protect the skin from that UV, you are meant to register it. So from a legal perspective, butyloctyl salicylate probably should have been registered as a proper sunscreen active. So why hasn't anyone done anything about this? I honestly don't know. In Germany and Switzerland, it's been pointed out as a problem before by government agencies, but then nothing actually happened. So is this a problem? Using it is really widespread and accepted in industry. Tons of brands have it in their sunscreens from multinational brands down to really small brands who probably don't even realize it's in their products. I think that's because butyl octosalicylate is probably quite safe most of the time. Octosalate is generally considered one of the safest sunscreen ingredients and given how similar this is, you would expect the safety profile to be pretty similar. In most places you're allowed up to 5 or 10% octosalate. I didn't see any justification for how they came up with this, but octosalate hasn't been officially flagged since. Butyl octosalicylate is recommended at 2 to 10%, so it seems like most of the time, the total amount of these two combined probably stays under 10%, so to me it seems like it's probably not a huge issue for us as sunscreen users. For people allergic to salicylates, it might be an issue if they don't check the inactive ingredients. But more of an issue is the lack of a dose limit, because it isn't regulated. Butyl octosalicylate is probably safe at a similar dose to octosalate, but I suspect that some of these mineral sunscreens that are using really small amounts of zinc oxide and titanium dioxide might be using a fair shake more butyl octosalicylate than is recommended. And that could potentially be unsafe, but it is hard to tell just from the ingredients list how much is being used and whether the formulators are being responsible. And that is just one of the risks of not having proper approval. But what I do have a massive gripe with is brands that put butyl octosalicylate in their 100% mineral sunscreens while bashing chemical sunscreens. Butyl octosalicylate is basically just octosalate but less safe because it doesn't have these extra safety precautions that come with a properly approved sunscreen ingredient. Like having performed safety studies, having a regulator go through the safety studies to work out the conditions for using it safely, having a limit on how much you can put into a product, having to declare the percentage, having assays done to check batches of raw materials coming in, and whether they're stable in the final formula. And I could go on. And all of this really highlights a common problem with clean beauty called regrettable substitution. They demonize particular ingredients for being toxic based on misinformation and misinterpretation of studies, which I have talked about before. But these ingredients were used in products for a reason. They have a function. It is really difficult, maybe even impossible, to formulate a 100% mineral sunscreen that gives high SPF while also being nice in texture, not sticky, no white cast, not drying. So now that the clean brands have scared potential customers about chemical sunscreens, they can't use them. And sunscreens are one of the few products where there is a very clear indication of how well it works right on the label, the SPF number. So these brands are profiting off the fear they've promoted about chemical sunscreens while sneakily, or maybe even unknowingly, using a less safe ingredient, when they really could have just been transparently using octosalate instead. And I'm sure a lot of clean beauty brands have no idea about this because you kind of have to be a bit clueless about science to be a clean beauty brand in the first place. I mean, if you look at these ingredients in the Environmental Working Group's database, in their, in my opinion, 
Typical pseudoscientific way, they've rated octosalate as higher hazard than butyl octosalicylate. I'm assuming it's just because octosalate is actually an approved chemical sunscreen that's had more safety studies done. Or perhaps maybe it's because they wanted to be able to give more brands their EWG verified label, which has an application fee of $500 and then a tiered fee structure based on profits, of course. I actually didn't realize how big a problem this was until recently. As a lot of you probably know from my repeated complaints, I do not like mineral sunscreens. So I never really paid too much attention to their marketing. I think they're unnecessary for most people. A lot of people are only suffering through them and probably getting less sun protection because of this clean beauty misinformation. And now that I've looked into the marketing, it turns out that a lot of clean, 100% mineral, Chemical-free sunscreens were functionally combination or hybrid sunscreens containing mineral and chemical sunscreens all along. And now we have come to the part of the video where we take a little scenic tour through what is, in my opinion, clean beauty hypocrisy. All of the following is purely my opinion. Let's start with color science. They have inactive butyl octosalicylate high up in the ingredients list for pretty much all of their non-tinted sunscreens. They say 100% chemical-free active ingredient. A lot of sunscreen brands that use butyl octosalicylate say this. I'm letting most of them off the hook if they don't have any other stuff, trashing chemical sunscreens, even though these EU marketing guidelines do say all free from claims without a good reason are unfairly fear-mongering on their own. Plus, since butyl octosalicylate is acting as a chemical sunscreen, it should also count as a dishonest claim. Let's skip past the fact that zinc oxide is a chemical. They say color science has never and will never use any chemical sunscreen actives. I guess maybe they should put legally approved in there. Color science actually highlight the reasons they don't use chemical sunscreens and they mention octosalate specifically a bunch of times. They say you're not meant to use it when you're pregnant and to use their product that has outlaw octosalate in it. To me, mentioning pregnancy is just particularly predatory because when you're pregnant, you are super anxious. There are so many rules and conflicting info about what you can and can't do. And there's all these hormones going through your body. So this to me is pretty gross. They say octosalate is a penetration enhancer. I think this comes from studies that look specifically at penetration of small molecules like herbicides and hormones, not sunscreens. Other studies have also found that regular moisturizers do it too, but again, they are using an ingredient that is so much like octosalate in their product that it almost definitely does the same thing. A whole bunch of these zinc sunscreen brands have also started saying that the FDA is asking for additional safety data on chemical sunscreens, which is true, but in a lot of other regions, regulators have checked the safety data for the same chemical sunscreens and approved them. It's mostly that the FDA is very slow with sunscreen reform and has specific requirements for the new test that they want. And for butyl octosalicylate, there is no safety data required by the FDA because it's ducking the regulations. And it hasn't been checked to the same extent in any other country either. If you're saying chemical sunscreens are so dangerous, then your ingredient is worse. So maybe you shouldn't be exaggerating how dangerous they are. Now, most brands mentioning this FDA stuff are talking about chemical sunscreens in general. But what's super interesting to me is that Color Science says the FDA wants extra data on 11 ingredients. They list them here, there's no octosalate. But if you go to the FDA page that they link, it actually says the FDA wants extra info on 12 ingredients. This particular page doesn't have the 12 listed, but in every other list from the FDA, octosalate is right there. So to me, this really does seem like they realize that their ingredient is basically octosalate in a wig. These names are difficult to pronounce. I really don't think they can argue that octosalate is harder to pronounce than butyl octosalicylate. Like I am struggling with that word. And color science is already really hard to pronounce. Like I don't even know if I'm saying that correctly. I think it's correct, but I have been saying colorescence and I've heard that everywhere a whole bunch of times. Harmful chemicals entering the bloodstream, spreading across the body, causing harm, disrupting the endocrine system, affecting hormones, causing cellular damage. There's no good evidence that this happens in humans with sunscreens or that even if there are small disruptions, they are anywhere near dangerous. I'm assuming they wrote this based on those FDA blood absorption studies, but again, the safety has been assessed in a lot of other countries. Chemical sunscreens, including octosalate, are potentially dangerous, toxic, harsh, cheap. 
but their product is made with wholesome ingredients. Also this bit, there is no evidence that zinc oxide harms coral. Zinc oxide is worse for corals than a lot of chemical sunscreens, and this isn't just nano zinc oxide, this is any zinc oxide because the thing that is hurting the coral is zinc ions. This doesn't seem to be a big issue except for maybe outliers where there are a whole bunch of people swimming near the coral with tons of sunscreen on. The concentrations measured at reefs is much lower than what's required to really damage coral. And this is the case with any sunscreen, including chemical sunscreens, including oxybenzone and octanoxate. It's really just these outlier measurements that seem to be a problem. There are issues with this data, which I will talk about in a later video. And if all this wasn't enough, they also have tridecyl salicylate in their products as well, which is like the third triplet with his hair parted the other way. And of course, the EWG also rates this safer than octosalate. Tizo. So Tizo says they are free from chemical sunscreen filters, except the ones that aren't actually approved, I guess. They also have this FDA thing, but at least they say 12 chemical ingredients. They have this fun comparison table where they show how minerals provide superior skin benefits, and most of these are just not true. I've debunked a whole bunch of these before. I'll do a quick speedrun version because most of the brands I'll be showing repeat a lot of these myths. Mineral sunscreens absorb about 90% of incoming UV and convert it to heat just like with chemical sunscreens. The total amount of heat is insignificant anyway, it heats up your skin less than 1 degree Celsius. A tiny amount of chemical sunscreen absorbs into blood, but it doesn't mean it's harmful, we have very sensitive detection methods, plus newer chemical sunscreens are purposely designed to not absorb into skin. Some people actually find mineral sunscreens more irritating because they're gritty and drying. A lot of sunscreens from outside the US that are for sensitive skin use chemical filters. Allergies are only a problem for people who are allergic to those things. I am personally allergic to tuna and eggplant. If you are not, I do not expect you to stop eating them in solidarity or anything because they are delicious. Chemical sunscreens don't all burn eyes and some people find mineral sunscreens worse. Zinc oxide is actually worse for coral than a lot of chemical sunscreens in that it causes harm at lower concentrations. And it's not a big issue anyway because the concentrations measured at reefs have been much lower than what's needed to damage coral apart from a few outliers like I mentioned before. And of course all of these supposed cons apply to butyl octosalicylate as well which they are using. So again, they are promoting this misinformation about chemical sunscreens while relying on an unregulated chemical sunscreen to make their product work. COT stands for contains only titanium and zinc. They also say they contain no chemical sunscreens. And they just repeat a whole bunch of misinformation about chemical sunscreens being bad that is pretty much the same as Tizo. I wonder if one of them actually got lazy and copied off the other. Even the brand names sound kind of the same. And they're both founded by plastic surgeons. Okay, so I went off and researched this and they have the same parent company and I think they sued Cooler for copying this particular formula with the butyl octosalicylate. And in the legal document, they are just repeating all of this misinformation in there. Does this count as perjury? I am not a lawyer. Ghost democracy. They turned the Tizo table into a bunch of essays and they added stuff about how chemical sunscreens directly lead to skin cancers, inflammation and irritation, which is what? Apparently chemical sunscreens, including octosalate, which is the twin brother of their ingredient in their sunscreen, they set up an environment in which your skin absorbs the UV rays and transform them into heat and the result of this is inflammation, irritation, increases your chance of skin reactions, but they also increase your chances of exposing yourself to other illnesses, including skin cancer in extreme cases. So they've blown up the less than one degree of heat into skin cancer somehow. I don't know, do these people like not eat hot food, not wash their hands in hot water, not take hot showers like they only take ice showers? Look, if I sound mad, I am mad because these brands are making products less safe with this BS marketing. And they're probably encouraging people to expose themselves to a lot more UV, which is a known carcinogen, by making them use a sunscreen that doesn't work as well for no good reason and scaring them about other sunscreens. I read so many reviews while researching this video where people were just trying to make mineral sunscreens work for them because this marketing had made them feel like they needed to use these mineral sunscreens which of course these brands are selling. People are massively under applying to avoid white casts and mixing it with stuff. I even came across a brand that uses butyl octosalicylate, of course, and they're actually telling people to apply pea-sized amounts to their hands, rub their hands together and pat it into their body. A pea is about half a mil, you are meant to apply a shot glass, 30 mils to your body. No one is applying 60 peas and rubbing their hands together and patting it in. 
I don't think I'm even exaggerating when I say clean beauty is literally killing people. There was this survey done in 2017 in Australia and they found that only 55% of adults agreed that sunscreen could be used safely on a daily basis. And this is down from 61% in 2013 and 2014. 17% of adults agreed that ingredients in sunscreen are bad for health if used regularly. And if you look up when clean beauty started, 2017 is quite early on in the clean beauty wave. And this was well before TikTok became this super powered flood of misinformation. And it isn't like it's fine because people can just use mineral sunscreens instead. As we can see from these reviews, a lot of people are going to all these lengths to try to use it. They're putting, I don't know, 60 Ps and rubbing them together and patting them in. A whole bunch of people are not going to bother with the 60 Ps and they're going to realize mineral sunscreens aren't worth the bother. Chemical sunscreens and hybrid sunscreens that have chemical and mineral are worse for you than the sun and giving you skin cancer anyway. So people are just going to go into the sun without sunscreen. And this survey is done in Australia, which has one of the highest rates of skin cancer in the world. More than 2,000 people die from skin cancer every year here. Pretty much everyone in Australia knows someone who has had part of their face cut out because of skin cancer. And even with all of this, people are getting increasingly scared to use sunscreen. And then on top of that, these brands are also destroying trust in the scientific and medical institutions who are promoting chemical sunscreens and other life-saving things. So it isn't even just skin cancer, which is already bad enough. It's other cancers, infectious diseases, all of that stuff. It's winding back all of this painstaking slow progress that's been made towards having longer and healthier lives. And there's limited funding for health. And so governments and scientists have to waste all this time and money on things that we have already solved. And that means that we have less money for the things that still need research. So yeah, I am mad. All right, back to light entertainment. Barbo Botanicals. Chemical sunscreens apparently interfere with the skin barrier. What a pity because your sunscreen has a chemical sunscreen in it. Chemical sunscreens are apparently chemicals cooked up in a lab, including octosalate. Again, your chemical sunscreen's twin brother. They tell you to pay attention to the active ingredients, but apparently do not look at the inactive ingredients. Chemical sunscreens come at a cost for both you and the environment. That is kind of vaguely threatening. They conveniently list out a bunch of chemical sunscreens, including octosalate. They say if you notice one of these chemicals, like octosalate, listed in the ingredients list, it's best to keep looking. They whip out the word nasty, and then they literally link two of their sunscreens that contain butyl octosalicylate. Again, I don't think chemical sunscreens are nasty, but if you're going to call them nasty, maybe don't put an even nastier ingredient in your sunscreen. Say moi. This is an EWG affiliated brand. They were part of their Clean Con last year. I did not make that name up. That is what they called it. They are kind of telling on themselves. They're EWG verified. They adhere to European cosmetic regulations as their baseline. Would be nice if they also adhere to those fair and honest marketing guidelines as well. They tell you to avoid chemical sunscreen and look for mineral sunscreens like ours. Of course they do. Just buy our products. Avoid everyone else's. Okay, they have an explanation in their sun school series. And it's this diagram that we see all the time with that like bouncy sunshine thing. And yeah, all of this is just wrong and also kind of weirdly worded. So they say chemical sunscreens absorb skin damaging UV rays, good. I guess they also absorb potentially harmful chemicals, which isn't that good? Again, let me remind you, they essentially use chemical sunscreens in their products, so it's pretty irresponsible for them to be using something that they say is harming humans and the environment, according to them at least. Goddess Garden. You know it's going to be good with a name like that. Their sunscreens are a safe alternative to chemical sunscreens. They say, we are very particular about the ingredients we select for our formulas, apparently not particular enough to look up their actual ingredients apparently. We have the standard myths about how natural is better, ignore the fact that nature is constantly trying to kill us, and ignore the fact that your product that you are trying to sell, the sole purpose of it, is to prevent nature from killing you. Like if nature was really that safe, then your product should not have to exist. Biodegradable. Interestingly, chemical sunscreen actors are actually biodegradable, but minerals are not. Zinc oxide doesn't break down. It stays as zinc oxide, which generally isn't a problem. But if they are going to make a claim like this, it should at least be true. All right, this bit is kind of hilarious. Don't higher SPS usually use chemical sunscreens? Often, higher SPS use chemicals to block UV rays because higher mineral content can mean a more whitening effect. But we only use minerals in our SPF 50 sunscreens and we've worked hard to make them sheer. No, this is exactly what you're doing, but in a less safe way. 
Chemical sunscreens can also be found in the bloodstream following use, so the FDA is conducting research to ensure chemical sunscreens are safe for use. Guess which ingredient they aren't studying? An octosylate is one of the ones that absorbs into blood, so your butyl octosalicylate probably does too. You will never find chemical actives like oxybenzone and octanoxate in our sunscreens because our families deserve better and our environment does too. I don't know if using an unregulated and unstudied version of a chemical sunscreen is any better. Maybe that is what you deserve. All good. This brand has gone above and beyond with their creative marketing. They've invented something called the Awful 8 because I guess actual alliteration is for chumps. Anyway, they're just chemical sunscreens and they're saying other companies are greenwashing for having chemical sunscreens in their products while saying they're reef friendly because they don't have oxybenzone and octanoxate, which were the ones that Hawaii banned. And I guess the greenwashing is kind of true, but also they are greenwashing because a lot of the chemical sunscreens they've named are actually less toxic for coral than zinc oxide, especially since you have to use a lot more zinc oxide in a product to get the same SPF. Plus on top of that, of course, they are using octosylates outlaw twin. Honestly, they are actually really creative. They say octosylate is like the X-Men of chemical sunscreen ingredients. It enhances skin's permeability. And that link actually goes back to the color science page. Apparently octosylate can negatively impact your immune system and trigger allergies. And that link goes straight back to the EWG because of course. And then there's this whole thing, which is what really, really pisses me off. There's almost no point in wearing sunscreen when the ingredients are just as harmful as the sun. You wear sunscreen to protect your skin, so why poison it with chemicals? I've done enough ranting in this video already. By clarity, I swear this is the last one. I just wanted to mention them because they have the standard stuff like break up with chemical sunscreens. Apparently chemical sunscreens are just too dramatic. But they also keep referencing the EWG, which is hilarious because the EWG actually rated their sunscreens as very bad. Like it's a seven, it's in like that red zone where you're meant to, I don't know, burn it and make sure your descendants do not go near it because, I don't know, it, it should just be like yeeted into space. So yeah, stop citing the EWG. They don't even like you. What are you doing? This is sad. Thank you for participating in my therapy session. Butyl octosalicylate isn't the only SPF booster like this. It is the most commonly used one though, and it is probably quite safe but it does potentially open the door for maybe less safe ingredients to be used in a similar way. Most of these other boosters that actually absorb UV are quite similar to other sunscreen filters, but unlike with butyl octosalicylate and octosalate, some of these have different enough changes to their structures that you would expect them to interact quite differently from the proper approved versions. And some of the properly approved versions do have some potential environmental and health risks that are being scrutinized, so these are kind of slipping under the radar. So I really do think these unregulated versions should really go through the proper safety evaluation process. And with this very slow FDA approval process for newer filters, since 1978 there's only been, I think, three sunscreen ingredients that have been approved in the US, and the whole chemical sunscreen FDA safety reassessment, on top of all this clean beauty fear mongering, I expect these sorts of ingredients will probably be used more and more. So I guess the takeaway here is, apart from the fact that clean beauty is BS, if you thought you were using a mineral sunscreen and it turns out that some of these ingredients are in it, maybe you've just learned something about your skin and how you can't really generalize chemical sunscreen ingredients. They are a really diverse group and if you're sensitive to a few of them, it doesn't mean all of them aren't going to work with your skin. So maybe it's worth trying out some hybrid or chemical sunscreens. Thank you for letting me get angry with you today. If you want more ranting, there is a playlist here. If you want less ranting, maybe try one of the science playlists.